Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of the strangest YouTube videos I ever have to record. This is not a YouTuber apology video, but it almost feels like one. Uh, I'm going to just break the bad news to you now, and then for about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about what this means for the big picture of chess in the future. Let's pull the band-aid right off. For the last year plus, if not year and a half, a massive match was being planned between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. The goal of this match was not just to pair two of the best speed players, in the case of Magnus, arguably the GOAT in all formats, against each other. The goal was to take the next big step for chess internationally. It was an event that has been scheduled, moved, and finally had an agreed-upon date, an agreed-upon format, which we will get into, and it was supposed to happen November 26th, roughly, to December 3rd of 2023. As of October 6th, which is today, the event has been canceled. And this is painful for a variety of reasons. This is a pretty raw reaction. I have found out the news just, I don't even know, an hour plus, two, maybe two hours ago, I don't know. Um, and we're going to talk about what this means, what this means for the future, but I don't think all hope is lost. None of you even knew that this event was being planned. In fact, after, I guess, the news broke internally, uh, Hikaru made a video about it. And this event, according to his stream, was going to happen at the UFC Apex. So they... We're going to put the event on Magnus versus Hikaru with chess boxing in the middle at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Can you imagine? Incredible stuff. Uh, this event was going to be a type of format called Fast Classical Chess. I have Hikaru muted because it's just a very loud hype trailer. It's a very nice trailer put together by his team. Uh, this was supposed to be the format. It was going to be 45-minute chess with a 15-second increment. They were going to play 12 games, standard and Fisher random. So they were going to play Chess 9LX or Chess 960, which is when all the pieces are scattered, and they were going to play regular chess. And the format was going to be 45 minutes. So not Rapid and Blitz like Hikaru frequently does, give Magnus really intense fights in it, and, and not 90-minute chess, where Magnus has had a good record against Hikaru. It was going to be something in the middle, uh, and uh, listen, I gotta tell you, the, uh, the prizes for this thing were, uh, were substantial. I think they come up here on the screen in a moment, as Hikaru tells you the rules of Fisher Random Chess, and the prize was uh, quite something. 400... Uh, that's, that's a bad still image. Let me go back. Okay. The prize was $400,000 for the winner, $200,000 for the loser, and the prize was going to be split uh, by win percentage after that. So if you won the match, 6.5 out of 12, you would win $400,000. If you lost, you would get $200,000, and the remaining $400,000, it was a $1 million prize fund, was going to be split up uh, based on your win percentage. This was a massive match. And originally, the plan, as Hikaru stated uh, when he went live to announce this, was also to include chess boxing. Chess boxing happened last year. It was a massive sensation that Ludwig put on with Mogul Moves. It had average live viewership of 300 plus thousand throughout. I was ready to commentate it. I had a contract basically ready, signed, and ready to go to be the main commentator uh, for this event, for the match, and also for chess boxing. I had custom suits coming in. <laughs> I mean, I, was, uh, I wasn't a participant, but I really do feel like along with the chess.com and even the players, uh, a part of me, you know, a, a, a part of me died a little bit when I, when I found out the news today. Um, let's talk about what this match would have meant. Yes, it would have been a spectacle for you, right? You would have gotten to see Hikaru, the, probably the only man on the planet that has challenged Magnus in any way, shape, or form in recent years, Versus Magnus, who is the man, right? We, we look at him to win basically every event. They are far and away the two most popular chess players internationally. You know, like Vishwanathan Anand is spectacularly popular in India in particular. Like, you can't take anything away from Vishy. But just, I think, on an international current competitive level, it's Hikaru and Magnus, and I think it's difficult to combat that. Furthermore, this event, in my opinion, was going to potentially be the next chess boom. It was going to be in Las Vegas at the UFC Apex. 
media would have been there, such as ESPN, various sports media. And but there was potential to create so much behind the scenes footage. I know for a fact, like Danny Wrench has traveled to Florida to record with, with Hikaru. They were filming Magnus and Hikaru interviews for this event last year in Norway Chess. I mean, it's, it's been years. They have been preparing so much content and maybe it will still be put on. The event seemingly has been canceled as of October 6th, which is today, because of issues with the venue. I guess insurance, something, something did not go through. You might remember about a week ago, our favorite YouTuber, Ludwig, said this mistake cost me $100,000, chess boxing is dead. That was eight days ago. Uh, I can tell you with knowledge, you know, I, I, I know obviously some behind the scenes stuff. I can tell you certain thing like it was still going to go on. Organizing an event where people who have zero boxing experience come to a state get in a ring half naked and punch each other while also playing chess, that takes a whole lot more insurance and sanctioning to organize. Getting two dudes who know how to move little wooden figurines really well does not take a whole lot of insurance, but getting the whole event organized with production, with security, with ticketing, something, something went wrong. I don't know what went wrong. I don't know what went wrong. Um, I'm not in those discussions. I am not... I'm not an employee of chess.com. I am a content creator and I play on their website exclusively. Um, this was going to be a monumental moment for chess in many ways. However, I don't think this is the end and I think this is worth having a bigger picture conversation about chess. Some of you might not be interested in this. Some of you want me to scream the rook seven times in a video, make a couple of jokes and show you some cool Magnus game or 200 ELO chess. But we need to talk about chess big picture because it's important for the development of you as a consumer of this content and maybe of paid courses or whatever in this world and for the best players in the world who you want to make a living. And the first question is, why has chess never become commercially viable? Let's take a step back. 99% of you who are watching this video right now were not into chess before 2020. 99%. About one, maybe, maybe 2% of you watched chess a lot before 2020. But most of you did not. I mean, you might have known about the game, but you weren't actively participating because we've had multiple explosions. The Queen's Gambit, the cheating scandal, short form content, which exploded in early 2023. I can tell you my YouTube channel had 200 plus million views. My total content had 300 million views in the month of January of this year. Short form content exploded off the map. It was the biggest thing any of us could have ever imagined. But why is chess not as commercially viable as literally any of your other favorite sports? Where are all the major sponsors? Where are the watch companies? Where are the car companies? Where are the telecom companies? Why doesn't the Speed Chess Championship have a bunch of things plastered? This was the opportunity for the match. This is the opportunity for all top level players to get into this beautiful chess boom. Let me give you a secret. Top level chess, the 20, 30 best players in the world, have not gotten, I think, even a fraction of the growth that social media, various chess content creators have gotten over the last several years. I am a good enough chess player to kind of bridge the gap between top level chess and layman. 200 ELO. That's why my channel has grown so much. My channel has grown so much because of you. That, that number that you see, subscribers and view count, that's you. You like to tune into this channel to listen to me talk about top level chess, to listen to me talk about low level chess, AI chess, chess drama, whatever it might be. Some of you watch my videos and complain, that's fine. I, you, know, you might be struggling in life, this might be your outlet and I wish you nothing but the best. Some of you actually do have meaningful constructive criticism, which I ignore. Um, that's a joke. I have taken much criticism over my life and I have definitely made adjustments. I don't listen to everything because you can't possibly listen to everything. But that's that. Top level chess players have not experienced anything even remotely close. Why? Why have they not? Why is the world championship not a... Did you know that the chess world championship has the same prize fund in 1990 as it did in 2023? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? One day, literally after this video, go look up the historical prize fund of the world chess championships. They literally don't make any sense. Why? St. Louis Chess Club is like blossoming i mean i'm they've been hit with a wave of 
a whole lot of bad things, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but those of you who are in the know in the chess world, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they have the World Chess Hall of Fame. Like, there's a whole little chess village in St. Louis. So much top talent goes to play there. The U.S. Championships are hosted there. That is through the efforts of Rex Singfield. One man, and probably his team. But he is a billionaire, and he is a philanthropist, and he is doing sensational things for chess. I have nothing but respect for what he is doing there for the St. Louis chess scene and chess scene in America, period. But he's a billionaire. And in general, chess historically has relied on the efforts of billionaire philanthropists. Robert Downey Jr. Iron Mans of the world that have so much money, they would love to park it in the game of chess and take it to new heights. But that's it. If you ever look at the World Rapid and Blitz Championships, for example, that were held last year in Astana, in Kazakhstan, you look at the sponsor list, you, you don't know those companies. You, not, none of, there's no brand presence there for 90% of the people watching, maybe in certain regions of the world. Chess is not commercially viable, especially for top players. If you're, out, if you're ranked outside of the top 30 of the world, you can barely make a decent living playing the game playing the game. You can make courses. You probably have students nowadays. You're welcome, by the way, because they start with me and then they want to take their chess seriously. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm simply saying the chess ecosystem for content consumption is so massive. But the best representatives of the game, like our best athletes, barely get to experience this unless they also have big social media followings. Hikaru is the best example. He's competing at the highest level and he has a massive channel and following. He's merged the two. He's the only one doing it. Magnus Carlsen's got an inactive YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. Can you imagine if Magnus Carlsen started making his own content? Magnus, please don't. Let me have the highest subscribed YouTube channel. You could have the highest ELO of all time. One day. You know, one day he's going to get bored and he's going to come back. But none of them... Like, 99% of top players aren't even verified on social media. That's the struggle. And that's why the match was going to change that. Because if we get to a spot where top-level chess players have a great social media following, we can record them behind the scenes, just like they do with top athletes. That's going to open so many doors. But historically, chess has been limited by sponsors nobody's ever heard of or billionaire philanthropists. And this was a step in the direction to change that. And as of October 6th, it has been put on pause. The reason why I'm not saying it's dead is because big events get canceled all the time. I really like the UFC. I like watching mixed martial arts. I like to think of Jones Cormier, UFC 200, the biggest event that they had been, that put on up to that point. John Jones couldn't fight like three days before the fight. Something about a drug test. That's crazy. The whole thing fell apart. Now this feels like for me it fell apart because I know the behind the scenes. And so much potential is gone for now. Will we put something on like this in the future? I hope so. If you're watching this right now, you have access to corporate sponsorships, hit us up. Maybe we can get another venue, but it's too late to pivot. It's too late to pivot in the fourth quarter. Company budgets, event budgets are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Chess boxing last year, they probably lost a couple hundred thousand. I am not their accountant. This is simply an estimation. Putting on these absolutely massive events and including prize funds takes a whole lot of money. It does. And chess.com's major objective, from my standpoint, I don't have any internal information, but from an outsider and spectator standpoint, is to create this kind of professional ecosystem for these top players to make a lot of money. And that's where chess has struggled historically. For example, why is chess only on YouTube and on Twitch? Why, like, why is that the only place you can... Why is it not on any sports bars? I was watching TV out in my living room the other day. Battle bots. Robots fighting each other is on the Discovery Channel. Because that stuff is epic. That stuff is fast-paced. And while that stuff is dorky and I have no idea how to program a robot, I was captivated. I was watching them slice open each other. Yes, as human beings, we are naturally drawn to violence and conflict. Just look at the media. But things like that, that is the stuff I am working toward. Everything I do in chess, including writing a book that has no notation in it and QR codes. This is not a promo. You can get the book if you want. You can Get, you don't have to get, my point is, everything I'm doing in the chess space, while building my own brand and my own, uh, you know, all my courses and my, my, my media and my, and, my, and my paid content and all that stuff, at the end of the day is to make it as easy and accessible to understand and learn the game for the consumer. I don't make garbage. I take a lot of pride in the stuff that I make. And that is the goal with all of this. 
is to make this game as global, as far-reaching as possible. Why does that matter for you, by the way? Right? You, you might, if you're still here and you had the attention span for all this, why, you, you might be sitting there going, you only are upset the match is over because you make, you're going to lose money on it, you know? First of all, if anybody's going to be upset, it's Magnus and Hikaru because they were guaranteed $200,000. You, you could lose every game of that match and make $200,000. All right, I don't know what they're, uh, <laughs> me, I was going to make, I don't know, I was going to make a fraction of that making recaps, all right, and maybe having some sort of sponsor plugs, but uh, that's not why I'm upset. If anything, they should be upset way more. It's about the fact that, where do we go from here? What is the goal of this? What is the goal of any of this, of this chess boom? How do we capitalize on it? Why are we not on a Netflix? Why are we not on a Hulu? All right? They only get interested in us because of the chess cheating scandal. But there's so much more we have to offer. The behind the scenes, the preparation for tournaments. There is so much more to be made of these chess players. And at the end of the day, if you have any favorite chess players, you should be rooting for them to succeed. Now, why does this matter for you? Do you like anything? Do you like anything? Anything at all? Sport, whatever. Anything that you watch on a screen. If you like anything or anyone, whether it's uh, athlete, whether it's musician, whether it's... You, you never stop and think, wow, I really want them to participate in something of a lower value. Wow, I want them not to be that successful. Wow, I want them to... That doesn't happen. It, it feels like anywhere except chess. It, chess is a w slightly weird ecosystem where if I start complaining that like chess should be sped up and get into TVs, people are like, you just want to make more money. You know, I got plenty of money. I got plenty of money. It's the fact that the people who are the best players and the best athletes and the best representatives don't get anywhere near the access of the social media folks that are participating in this world because our entire ecosystem, in my opinion, from top to bottom is broken. The commercial viability of it. The fact that, why are people gonna sit and watch a seven hour game? Why? That's like, that's tough. That's a tough thing to do. A, a tournament that lasts four weeks, right? Like every sport is speeding up. You like a footballer, you like a baseball player, you like uh, American football, right? Whatever you like. You want them to excel and participate in something at the highest echelon, at the highest production quality, all of the stuff that you watch behind the scenes of people, Drive to Survive, for example, Formula One. Drive to, those of you that watch Formula One, Drive to Survive changed so much about Formula One. Where is Chess's Drive to Survive? Okay, maybe these chess players are not as interesting and handsome and muscular, but like, we can do something with them. I don't know. I'm sure there's something that we can do with them. To, to package some type of uh, content like this. That is the major reason this is said. Um, chess has to change and modernize a little bit, in my opinion. For you, higher production quality, higher content is great. But a lot of you could even get jobs through chess, which you don't even realize. If you're a personable individual and your rating is 1,200, that's like, you have a fast track if you live in any major city to teach chess after school. In New York City, if you're a 1,200 and you're a normal person who can pass a background check, you can make $100 an hour. The demand for chess is massive. You can run chess tournaments. You can run camps. All those kids are going to play chess. You could probably get them to sign up for something through a referral. You can create a business through this. People do it all the time. There has literally never been a better time to be in the world of chess. As a consumer of it, you can start a local chess club at a bar. You could meet people, you could meet friends. Why do people participate in hobbies? It's to feel intelligent and good and feel progress and also a sense of community. That's it. There has literally never been a better time to participate in the world of chess. And right now, the people who are experiencing the biggest and most uh, felt kind of harvesting of the fruits of the booms of chess are people like me, not the top players in the world. Hikaru Magna is great, but it's people like me because I'm able to take something like a social, and it's all the creators. I can take the YouTube, I can take the Twitch, I can turn that into courses, I can sell merchandise, I can publish a damn book, I can start a chess tournament tour. I wanna build a Gotham chess club. A high-end, posh, really nice chess club in New York City. If you're watching this and you're involved with a venture capital company, hit me up. You know, all of these different routes and avenues. Then I want to build 
chess programs in schools. I donated $100,000 a couple of years ago. I want to start a foundation, maybe get people into better colleges through the angle of chess or through STEM or something. There is so much that you can do and uncover in something that has gotten as popular as chess, even though it's a hobby. Anyway, if you're still watching, that was the purpose of this video. The chess ecosystem doesn't quite make sense right now. It's got to change some, something has to give. For example, in 2024, the candidates tournament, which is the tournament where the winner plays the world champion, is being held in Toronto. That is the first time ever a candidates is held in North America. I think there's like a technicality, maybe in like 1959, there was some knockout match in, you know, Saskatchewan where people had to take a reindeer to get there or something. How crazy is that? That's, we, we gotta, we've all got to modernize and adapt. The boom has to be felt everywhere. We've got to be thinking media. We've got to be thinking social media. We've got to be thinking things like Netflix specials, these big scale matches, getting the sponsors involved for all the top players in the world. That stuff, that stuff goes throughout the entire wave. It's not just about me making recaps. I'm going to be here making my AI content and my, my low ELO content. That's plentiful. Millions of chess games are played every day. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm going to write a sequel to the book. I've got so much more to give to the chess world. Don't worry. But we got to make events like this happen. And uh, it's a shame that it's not going to happen due to various logistical happenings that I'm not aware of. And frankly, I do not want to be aware of. But it's a shame that this fell through. This is why it's important. And I hope that all made sense. If there's anything actionable that I said out of any of this, please do write it in the comments. Take some action in your own life. Go start a club at the local bar. Go do something. Go, go, go try to do some private lessons. And uh, thank you for being in the world of chess. Three, four years ago, nobody cared. We were a very, very small blip on the map. Some people were playing chess because they really enjoyed it. Now it's weird if you don't play chess or if you haven't heard of chess. So the match is canceled. Uh, I don't think that's going to change in 2023. And maybe we will see you in 2024. I think that's all I have to say. Get out of here.